excited to preach this. Um, I think it's a very important subject, and um, I've been praying that God can use this message for for your life. You can turn in your Bibles to John chapter 18. John 18, and we're going to start in verse 37. And it says, Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Every one that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to preach. Lord, I pray that you can Use me, Lord, that I can preach your message to the people. And Lord, I pray that you can use this far beyond I can do with my abilities. And I pray that you'll bless this message. In Jesus' name, amen. So in these first two verses we read, you see Pilate was faced with two opposing narratives. You have the angry mob that they were um, accusing Christ as being a blasphemer and also a liar. And on the other side was Jesus. And what Jesus said is that he's there bearing truth. And with that, those two opposing sides, Pilate had this question, what is truth? I think it's a question we all have through through our lives, and I think especially during this time, all around the world, what is truth? We're seeing two sides so opposite What do I believe in? What is this? And really this word truth, I think is deeper than we know. I I looked it up in the dictionary. And what they say is that truth is the state of being true, which is the worst definition I've ever seen. (laughs) trying to define truth by the word true. And it's like, I don't think that's a very good definition. So I'm going to give you a three-part definition of the word truth. And each of these will be found in the book of John. And this entire message will be in the book of John. So if you turn to John chapter 14... And verse 6, very popular verse, it says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Number one, Jesus is truth. If you turn also to John chapter 16, In verse 13, it says, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come? He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So the second is that the Spirit Spirit of truth or the Holy Spirit. And it says that 
the Spirit guides us into all truth. Not just some truth, all truth. And of course, the only way to have that knowledge of truth is by being saved. Because if you do not have Christ as your personal Savior, you're not going to know that truth. And then the third, turn to John chapter 8. In verse 31 and 32, it says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The third is the word of truth. Um, There's so many verses, and I wanted to just stay in the book of John, but I'll read a a verse for you, 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So you have Jesus Christ, the spirit of truth, the word of truth, and really you can summarize that all to be God. Jesus is God, the Holy Spirit is God, and the Word is God. You can see that in John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So you can see what our Bible says is that God is truth. God is absolute truth. Everything else is just an imitation or an opposition of it. You know, I've been thinking this phrase that I think you all have heard, and it bothers me so much. And it says, trust science. Does anyone hear that? Or trust the experts. And What passes for science, I think, is embarrassing. I remember when I was in school, learned about the scientific method. You have a hypothesis, and then through a series of testing, and and, uh, a big, long list. I feel like now they're just completely skipping over that. They have a hypothesis that they've never proved. And they call it science. And there is so much false science right now. And what this is, you know, science is fact and truth. But I see it all the time that this false science opposes truth. And people are buying into that. I remember when I was in college, I took a geology class. Not that I was interested in rocks, but... I figured it would be pretty easy. And we took a field trip up in Duluth, and they showed us this cliff of shale rock. And what the professor was saying is, um, based on carbon dating, this proves that this rock is such and such millions of years old. And I remember thinking, I know more about rocks than this guy does. (laughs) And next to me was this this student talking to her friend. And I overheard her saying something like this. How can we know the age of a rock if no one was there in the beginning? And I'm like, okay. Through observation, I didn't think she was all that bright. But through further observation, I think she was brighter than the professor. (laughs) Like, that's some good thinking. But uh, I think through the Holy Spirit, 
we can know more truth than the so-called experts. This is a great verse. It's in Daniel 1.4. You don't have to turn there, but it says that children in whom was no blemish, but well-favored, and skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge, and understanding science. It's the first time the word science was in the Bible, and it doesn't say the experts or the professors. It says children. How do these children have this understanding of science? Well, they were children of Israel that they were kidnapped from Babylon. And it says that in history that they would teach their kids passages of Scripture, that they had to memorize Scripture. And I believe that's the reason why they know science. And I can assure you that you and I can and should know more truth than the so-called experts. And I'm going to try to prove that through this message. But you can see that false science opposes truth, opposes the Bible, opposes God. Another good verse, one, uh, 1 Timothy 6, 20 and 21, it says, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so-called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. And those are the two times in Scripture that uses that word science. And you see Paul, that he was warning Timothy about this false science. This is thousands of years old. But there was still false science way back then. And that Paul warned Timothy, hey, don't fall prey of this false science. I don't think we should be trusting so much into science. Because how do we know the truth? What is truth? I think we need to be trusting Jesus. This message today, I think, will sound very political. And I'm not going to try to intend that, but... um, I want to let you know, I'm not taking scripture verses and applying to nowadays politics. What I'm going to be doing is taking politics in the Bible and applying to our daily lives. Because you're going to see so much politics in what I am about to read. And what we're going to do, we are going to follow these accusers, angry mob, whatever you want to call them. I'm going to call them fake news. (laughs) Because that's exactly what they were. They were spreading lies to the people. And there's a striking resemblance. When we look at these verses, you're going to see, goodness, this sounds like today. And I'm not going to bring up current events or politics. I know you guys are smart, and I'm going to let you guys connect the two and see the parallels. We're going to start in John chapter 5. And we're just going to go chapter by chapter. I'm not going to stay long. I'm just going to point out about this fake news. John 5, and look at verse 13. And it says, And he that was healed wist not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away a multitude. Being in that place afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple, and said unto him, Behold, 
thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. So you can see what they claim, that Jesus broke the Sabbath and claimed to be God. You could see that what there is going in through their mind, the fake news, show us the evidence. That's what they want to see. Prove it. And let's look at what Jesus says about it. Verse 31. And it says, If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me. And I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. Ye sent unto John, and he bare witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say, that ye might be saved. He was a burning and a shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. And the Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And ye have not his word abiding in you for whom he hath sent. Him ye believe not. Search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Now look at verse 46. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? And the fake news was saying, show me evidence. And he says, look at the witnesses. See that? Look at the witnesses. And he tells you about John. He tells you about his works, the Father, the Bible, and Moses. It gives a list. These people, even my works, even the word of God has testified of me. This is the proof. But they would just ignore it. Nothing to see. Now let's look in the book of John 7, in verse 10 through 13. And it says, But when his brethren were gone up and went, he also up into the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. Then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, Where is he? And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him. For some said, He is a good man. Others said, Nay, but he deceiveth the people. Howbeit no man spake openly of him for fear of the Jews. And these few verses, it shows that the fake news accused him of deceit. Not only that, it caused fear. It caused confusion, and chaos. Some believed that he was a good man, and some believed he was deceiving the people. Now look in the same chapter in verses 44 through 47. Some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. Then came the officers to the chief priests, 
and Pharisees. And they said unto them, Why have ye not brought him? The officers answered, Never man spake like this man. Then answered them the Pharisees, Are ye also deceived? And you can see there that there's more of accusations of deceit. Next chapter. Let's start in verse 1. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. And you can tell in this passage that the fake news was trying to trick him and trying to catch him in his own words for the purpose to accuse him. Uh, same chapter, look at verse 13. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true, for I know whence I came, and whither I go. But ye cannot tell whence I come, and whither I go. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. And yet, if I judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, but I, set, I and the Father that sent me. It is also written in your law, that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. And again, you can see that they wanted this evidence. And Jesus said, I have witnesses. They said, no, your witness is not true. And he said, no, even in your law, if you have two witnesses, and he, he said, myself and my father testify of myself. Now look in verse 48. And it says, Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep me saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead and the prophets. And thou sayest, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. And you can see that there's false accusations claiming that he has a devil. And then look at verse 58. Jesus saith unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Then took they up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. And there you can see violence. They picked up stones. That's interesting. 
look at the next chapter. John 9 and verse 16. And it says, Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. And there you can see this causing division. Divide the people. Confusion. Confusion. Same chapter, look at verse 21. But by what means he now seeth, we know not. Or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age. Ask him. He shall speak for himself. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. And this chapter, earlier I didn't read it, but Jesus healed the, a blind man. And the fake news went, talked to him, talked to his parents, and his parents didn't even want to say anything because they already planned, if you say this is Christ... You're out of the synagogue. You can see that's blackmail. All right, next chapter, John 10. Look at verse 19. There was a division, therefore, again, among the Jews for these saints. Many of them said, He hath a devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? Others said, these are not the words of him that hath a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? And again, you can see division, accusations, and confusion. Now look at verse 30. It says, I and my father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you, from my father, for which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou, being a man, maketh thyself God. And again, you can see more violence, picking up stones, and more false accusations. Now look in John 11. In verse 43. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot, with grave clothes, and this and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, Loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and our nation. And you can see they were worried of losing their position, their status. I'm sure there was money involved. You can tell these were politicians. And they said, if the people believe in Jesus, then we're done. We lose our job. We lose our position. And you know what they're willing to do to cover that? Look in the next chapter in verse 9. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, 
but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death, because that by reason of him many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. And now you can see that they were willing to destroy the evidence. And Lazarus was the evidence of God, of truth. They knew it, but they, they wanted to get rid of the evidence, destroy it. I have a question. Why did these wicked men treat an innocent man so poorly? And the answer is found in John 8. In verse 44, ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. And you can see, it wasn't all about politics. It was the scheme of Satan. That he used politics, confusion, chaos, division, deceit, lies, to turn the people away from truth, which is Jesus. If you fast forward to 2020, same thing. It's the scheme of Satan. Satan uses politics, confusion, chaos, division, deceit, lies to turn the people away from Donald Trump. No. That might be what we see. But it goes far deeper than that. Satan's playbook is the same. To turn away the people from truth. Which is Jesus. It's interesting. This study. In John, Jesus was on earth, right? Why is there so much confusion and lies today. I'm telling you because Jesus is coming back. Satan knows that. He's doing everything he can to lead the people away. Not just away from our president, not from conservative living. It's to turn the people away from Jesus Christ. You can see the message wasn't about politics. It goes way beyond that. I have three questions. Number one, what is truth? And we answer that with Jesus. Jesus is the truth. The second, why is truth being opposed? And that's because it is Satan's scheme. And the third, how can I know truth? And I think so many people are seeking that. What is truth? Stop trusting this false science. Trust Jesus. The spirit of truth will guide you into all truth. The only way is through salvation. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We need to get to the point that we know we are sinners. Jesus paid the price. I need to put my faith into this truth. This Jesus. And I'm telling you, the spirit of God, the spirit of truth, will guide you into all truth. And then also... I want to tell you that we should filter the news through the word of truth. 
It would help us so much if we can use our Bible, our, the word of truth. It's going to clear up so much. All this confusion, all this stuff, if we are in our Bible, it's going to show us so much. Um, the end times. Um, the Bible shows so much to us. And we're going to go back to where we started in John chapter 18. And then we'll go back to verse 38. It says that Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. At that day, Pilate stood face to face with truth. Because Jesus is truth. And you can see that he knew the truth. And we know that because of what he said. He said, I find in him no fault at all. He's looking right at truth. But sadly, he didn't stand up for truth. Let's look in the next chapter. Chapter 19 and verses 12 through 16. And it says, and from thenceforth, thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover in about the sixth hour. And he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him, Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he him, therefore, unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. He just gave in to the people. The angry mob. He knew the truth. But he didn't stand for the truth. And I'm going to give you two final thoughts. One is a warning and the other is a challenge. And the warning is this. Don't buy into this nonsense. Don't follow the crowd being misled from the truth. It's Satan's plan to take you as far away from God as he can. Don't buy into that. The challenge is we need to stand up for truth. We need to stand up for Jesus. We need to stand up for faith. We need to stand up for the word of God. All this politics, it's not our fight. You know, it's not flesh and blood. It's the principalities of powers and darkness. We can't do a lot, but what can we do? What we can do is stand on truth these last days. The question is, what is truth? And the answer is Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for your word. Word of truth that we can know what's right and wrong. Lord, as a people, as a church, as an individual, Lord, I pray that we can proclaim truth. 
Lord, to spread the truth to the lost. And Lord, I pray that you can use this church in these last days. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.